first story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not letting my daughter, 14, come to her aunt's wedding because she wanted to wear white? My male 43 sister's wedding was last week. She sent me and my wife an invitation and said that the wedding allowed kids so everyone was bringing their kids to the event. Once I heard that kids were allowed, I let my wife know and she decided to go dress shopping with our daughter, 14-year-old. Our daughter is quite picky when it comes to clothes. It took them several visits to the mall to find what our daughter was looking for. The day of the wedding, my daughter came wearing her dress and showing it off. She wanted to take a minute and look at. I turned around and saw that it was a white gown that looked like a wedding dress. I don't know what I felt, but it wasn't right. I asked my wife why she let our daughter buy a white dress knowing that it's inappropriate and unwanted at any wedding. She said it was no big deal and that our daughter can't possibly be a distraction because that's ridiculous. I was mad. I kept thinking what our mother and sister are going to say when they see it. I told my daughter she needed to go change or she isn't allowed to come when wearing this dress. She had a meltdown asking why. I told her it's her choice after she refused and didn't allow her to come with us to the wedding. My wife screamed at me after my daughter went upstairs, calling me an a-hole for not letting her attend over a dress, calling me crazy to think my daughter would steal the attention, and I ended up going alone. My family knew. Some agreed with me while my sister blew up saying she wanted her niece there, and I screwed up big time because it didn't matter if she wore white. She is a kid. My wife and daughter haven't been talking to me ever since, and no one seems to understand how I could have taken the blame if my daughter showed up in white. Now for the top comments. This one hurts to read. You were damned no matter what you did. Blamed if she wore white and blamed for her not attending. I'm going with not day hall because you erred on the side of caution. You could have called others to see if it'd be okay. That's just about the only way you could have made it through this thing without taking shots from someone. But if he called, the bride still could have felt awkward. How would that conversation go exactly? Dave the wedding. Hey, stressed out bride. We're about to leave and my daughter wants to wear white. Is that cool with you? Now the bride is on the spot on her wedding day. Not day haul. No phone call was necessary. I had that experience. We had a child-free wedding. Nothing against kids, but it was all outdoors in late September in 55 degrees Fahrenheit weather with two fire engines for pictures. Our dogs, plus the venue had peacocks and guinea fowl and miniature donkeys just running around. Plus, I had two departments off off-duty firefighters and an open bar in the venue limit of 120. Disclaimer, it was 2018 people. Don't fuzz about social distancing. It was a great time, just not for the little ones to be running around. The morning of the wedding, as I'm dealing with last-minute snafus, my BFF, let's call him Tim, male 41, calls me. We've been friends for 26 years, despite his 20 years stationed all over the world. The phone call went basically like this. We had a babysitter for our nine-month-old son lined up, but a wife, who hates me because I have more history with her husband than she does by about 18 years. On the upside, my husband and Tim get along great. We'll not attend unless we can bring the little one, and she won't let me attend solo either. I know you want a child free, but what do I do? I don't want to ruin your day. Yeah, that phone call sucked big time. I was damned if I do, and damned if I don't. Ultimately, little guy attended. They dressed him warmly, and he did get into any misadventures, but it was added stress on an already hella stressful morning. OP is not a day hole. Nobody should be adding questions and stress to the bride and groom's day. Wife never should have let her buy a white dress. Little Miss Picky needs to learn that there are boundaries in life and this is one of them. And guess what? You don't always get what you want. Personally, I think I look terrible in cherry red. But the polar shirt of my work uniform is... cherry red. So I suck it up and wear it. What's daughter going to do if she doesn't like a work uniform? Just scream I don't like it and not go to work? Not day hall. You did the right thing. Your wife sounds childish and rude. She should have your back no matter what. She took your daughter shopping. She should have been the adult and told her daughter no white dress is allowed. I see everyone blaming the wife slash daughter, but no one's blaming Opie for not checking that his kids have appropriate attire until the morning of the wedding? It's his sister's wedding. He should have some responsibility in making sure his daughter and other family members were prepared for the day. Instead, he delegated to his wife and his admittedly picky daughter, then acted surprised at the result. I'm going with everyone sucks here. Not day hall. 
What your daughter wanted to do was incredibly inappropriate. You're absolutely right that it would have taken the blame if your sister would have taken offense. Turned out that she didn't, but you had no way of knowing that. Your wife also showed extremely poor judgment in buying the dress. You told your daughter that she could go in that dress and she had a hissy fit and then ended up missing the wedding. She's 14. She's old enough to bear consequences of her own actions, especially if they are self-imposed. Now for the next story. Am I a hall for not forgiving my sister-in-law? My brother, 33 male, asked me, 36 male, to be in his wedding to his now wife, 30 female, which took place two years ago. His wife and I had never gotten along. I did try, but she has an opinion on everything. She's a great Budinsky. A few years back, when she learned of an abusive relationship I've gotten out of, she inquired what I had done to make her act that way. When I replied that I hadn't done anything, she smirked and said, Yeah, I'm sure you didn't do anything to cause this. I asked if she would ever ask a woman what she did to make her husband strike her. She replied, It's not the same situation. I responded, The abuse I suffered is not open to your interpretation, and your toxic opinion is not wanted, so shut the hell up. Things were never great after that. A month before the wedding, she got a card in the mail with Miss Piggy in a dress on it. It wasn't signed, but she assumed it was me mocking her. She informed me that if I did fess up, I was out of the wedding. I told her I hadn't done it, and I wouldn't have done it. My brother told me he was sorry, but he had no choice. I was uninvited from the wedding. We've been civil since then, but we are not close at all anymore. When family functions happen, I will inquire, is Crabhead going to be there? Note, I do not use her name. This is how I refer to her, and I'm not sorry for that. I will not attend if she's there. My parents have begged me to make things right with her because it's making their lives difficult. Recently, she came up as a suggested follow on Instagram. I looked through her posts, and then at her tagged posts. And there it was, the Miss Piggy card, posted by one of her gay friends. Mailed this off to a fabulous bride-to-be last month. Congratulations, girl. I sent the post to my brother, and within an hour, he was on the phone with me in tears. His wife claims she never saw the tagged post, and the guy never told her in person. Almost definitely lies. She says based on my attitude towards her, she was right to assume that I sent it, and she's not apologizing. My brother is begging me to forgive her and move on, so that we can have a relationship again. I told him that what they both did is unforgivable, and if she won't at least admit that she was completely in the wrong, I wanted nothing to do with her ever again. I said she was a lying sack of garbage and cancer in our family. My brother just kept repeating that he was sorry and couldn't stop crying. My mom called me up and asked me to please leave the past in the past, that they can't fix not inviting me to their wedding. I replied, that's right, they can't. They were wrong and now they can never fix it, and I hope they feel terrible forever. I know that I'm digging my heels in and being spiteful. Am I being too much of a nahal? Not nahal. Even if she genuinely didn't know her friend sent it, she never vented to anyone about it? Like she never said to her friends, my a-hole brother-in-law sent me this terrible card. To which somebody would have said, that was actually so-and-so. They were sending that card as a fun joke. They caused the split. It's not on you to make it right. She was also tagged on Instagram the day before her wedding. She claims she never saw it. Like even at that point if she admitted she messed up and asked me to attend, I still would have been upset with her. But I would have attended, and I would have had quite a bit more respect for her. At this point, we're past simple misunderstandings and into caught in a harmful lie. Oh, for sure. She seems like the kind of person who isn't prone to apologies. Probably rationalized it as he still would have done something to ruin the day, to make herself feel better. Not today, Hall. And your sister-in-law sounds like a nightmare. But won't lie, part of me feel for your brother. It sounds like obviously he cares about you and stuck in a bad spot between two people he loves. I agree you have no reason to forgive her, but do hope you can patch things up with him in the future. He is honestly the only reason I feel bad. I love my brother dearly and always will, but I won't deny that I'm angry with him. I don't see anything he can do, short of walking away from her that would come close to fixing things. I do not want him to give up on his marriage because I know he does love her. I might be completely off base, but I just have to ask, are you sure your brother is okay? Like, is he prone to crying normally? 
I only ask because between him being inconsolable and her attitude towards male victims of domestic violence, I don't know, man. It just gives me a bad slash weird feeling. I hope he's okay and that he's just realizing how the chick screwed up his life. But I would probably try to see if he's okay or if he needs help getting out. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for making my mother-in-law cover her white dress with a sweater at my wedding? I got married Saturday, and mother-in-law showed up in a white dress for some reasons beyond her control. She's currently eight and a half months pregnant, so it isn't like she had a bunch of options. And her foot got put in a boot for an ankle injury a few days before the wedding and said she couldn't walk right in the floor-length dress. I tried not to be a bridezilla because obviously I don't want her to trip when she is heavily pregnant. But she showed up and immediately started screaming at me that this is the only dress she has. And if I don't like it, she will leave because she is sick of our crap, which she didn't elaborate on. I said that was fine, but I asked her to wear a sweater that my mom had to offset the white dress. Mother-in-law started to cry and said that I was being mean to her and she doesn't want to look like a Sunday school teacher. We bickered over it, and she ended up putting the sweater on while she cried. But she came up to me during the reception and threw the sweater at me, and said that her husband told her to take it off, and he is furious with me. My husband told her to just leave. So mother-in-law left, and her husband posted something snarky in social media, about imagine being so insecure that you let some petty stuff ruin your wedding. And he predicts the divorce. Now no one is talking. I don't know if I overreacted, because she wasn't wearing anything crazy like a wedding gown. Now for the top comments. Not they, Hull. You did not overreact. Your mother-in-law did. Possibly because she's pregnant, or possibly not. While she may have had limited dress options at 8.5 months pregnant, she should know better and should have brought her own sweater or a wrap. Her husband is a douche. It would have been better if your husband had handled the situation from the beginning and in the future should handle any issues with his family, and you with yours. They also sell laundry dye now. Literally throw the dye in the machine, and it changes the color perfectly and rinses out of the machine. You can even do it by hand. Not Day Hall. She did it on purpose and rubbed it on your face straight away to steer the pot. She was looking for trouble. Not Day Hall. Normally, I would be more forgiving considering the pregnancy and her injury. But the fact that she showed up and made a big deal over her own outfit by screaming at you before you had even brought it up to her says she was seeking that attention all along. To throw on hysterics and cry and have a temper tantrum because she was asked to wear a sweater is ridiculous. And the fact that your husband was so disgusted with his own mother that he asked her to leave your wedding pretty much says it all. Also, his dad posting that trash on social media is absurd. What the hell kind of parent does that after their kid's wedding? That guy isn't his dad, and would love nothing more than for mother-in-law and my husband to never speak again. We are already banned from their house, and I'm not allowed to meet the baby. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to let my stepdaughter use my daughter's wedding dress? I'll try my best to explain the situation and make sure to present both sides. I, 49 female, met my stepdaughter, Zoe, 2.5 years ago. I married her father less than five months ago. It was a small and private celebration, since that's what we felt was the best thing to do, since I'm still grieving my daughter Lauren, who passed away from sepsis at the age of 26. It was so sudden. She was doing okay and was getting ready for her wedding that was supposed to happen the same month she passed away. We still don't know what went wrong. We were devastated, to say the least. Her fiancé had a hard time adapting to the new normal, but I still have contact with him as we are very close. I took most of her belongings, including her wedding dress. We bought it together, and she put a lot of her touches on it and worked hard on it. Although it hurt to look at it, I make sure it's safe. Zoe is younger than Lauren. She's 23. We are not very close, and distance is one of the reasons why. But we're very respectful towards each other. The issue started when Zoe visited to talk about her wedding in April. We were talking about wedding dresses, and she suddenly brought up Lauren's wedding dress. I asked her what about it, and she said she saw it several times and it got stuck on her mind. Asked if she could see it, and I let her. She then said she'd like to wear it at her wedding. I felt uneasy, so I told her I wasn't sure that was a good idea. She told me it's fine, she'll have to change a few things in it so it can fit her size and style. 
this is why I had a hard time accepting. I told her I was sorry, but I can't let her have it. She offered me money, but its sentimental value is what matters to me. She argued, saying I was making things complicated, and it was alright since she too is my daughter. She asked if I don't love her as much, so I told her my love for her is different. She threw a fit, calling me unfair and unreasonable to still say no. Her dad got involved in the argument, saying he doesn't see why I'm against it. I declined to discuss it anymore, but they kept bringing it up, asking if my daughter would have wanted someone else to have the opportunity to wear this dress since she unfortunately couldn't. This made me so mad, I lashed out at both of them and kept saying no. Others said that I had no right to act like that, leaving the dress in the closet when my stepdaughter can make good memories with it, but she said she's planning to changing its look. 100% not a day haul, but everyone else in this story sure is. The fact that both your stepdaughter and your husband are continually guilting you after you have firmly said no is not just disrespectful, it's preying on your grief. I'm disgusted that any person who claims to love you would presume to tell you that your recently deceased daughter would want, all so a girl can avoid having to look for another wedding dress. And the audacity to tell you that you are making things complicated. I'm infuriated for you. You're right about what you said. My husband said he thinks that Zoe is just trying to get close to me and bond with and claims I'm not opening up to her. But the dress shouldn't be involved in my relationship with Zoe. I don't know why he refuses to see how unreasonable they're being. It's exhausting and I can't take any more guilt tripping. I know why. He doesn't respect your feelings, your boundaries or your grieving journey. I know everyone on the sub says we say to get out of there too fast but I would ask them to go to family therapy with you ASAP. If they don't agree to give it a shot, then I honestly would call the lawyer. This is a hill I would die on. Someone who loves you will not hurt you like this. He's gonna steal that dress and give it to his daughter. Opie, you should store the dress somewhere else, at least until the wedding is over. Not day hall. That dress is no longer just a dress. It's a sacred memory for your daughter. You really need to put it elsewhere, though, because I wouldn't put it past your husband or his daughter to take it when you aren't around. I would also tell your husband that he needs to shut the hell up and be grateful he will get to see his daughter get married, not have only a dress left to remind him of what should have been. That you would trade anything to have your daughter back, but since you can't, you will hold on to every memory you have. I would also tell him if he ever goes up against you about anything regarding your daughter's memory again, you will be filing for divorce within 24 hours afterward. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.